Um, yes, as mentioned, I'm co-founder and CEO of Care of. We're a direct to consumer digitally native personalized vitamins brand. Um, wanted to talk today on how do you actually build marketing into your product itself. So, so often as marketers, we think of it as we're handed the product from the merchandising team or from the product team. And then our job is to go out there and put Facebook ads against it, put search ads against it, you know, figure out our channel optimization, and that our, our job sort of starts with that handoff. And I think my message today is kind of encouraging folks to think about how can they go back to the actual product creation process itself and influence that in a way that makes your job easier down the road. Um, so when we created Care Of, uh, so Care Of, we've been live about 18 months at this point. Um, and when we initially created Care Of, we spent about a year kind of understanding the category and market, but also thinking about how did we build the product. And a lot of my thinking at that time was around how do we set this up for success from a marketing standpoint. We're thinking through, so vitamins and supplements is, while health and wellness itself is a sexy category these days, vitamins and supplements is not uh, historically. It's one that just feels, and this is partly what I think the opportunity here is, is you have a category that is stagnant. Um, and generally, if you think about vitamins and supplements, it's something that's tucked away in the shelf. And it's kind of like icky packaging. Uh, you either have a brand that's kind of a agro font on a chrome tub uh, marketing to bros, or you have put it a green bottle, put a leaf on it, uh, and that's it. Or maybe you just go the neutral route, put it in a brown bottle, and just get it out the door. And so there's not a lot of thought that goes into the branding, so it winds up stuck on the back shelf. Uh, and I think the interesting thing here is when we were doing our research, about half the population takes vitamins and supplements. And when we would tell someone that stat, they'd usually be like, whoa, that's more than I thought. Are you sure that's right? And we had one instance where someone's like, we were doing user interviews and they said, uh, that, that can't be right. I don't know anybody that takes vitamins and supplements. And their roommate was actually there and their roommate was like, no, I, I take vitamins and supplements. So they didn't even know that their own roommate was taking the product. Uh, because it's just tucked away, people don't talk about it. But net promoter score is basically that question that you get asked, how likely are you to recommend this brand or this retailer to your friends? And anybody who's on a scale of one to 10, anybody who's saying uh, eight and above is, Oiled again, jeez. Uh, anybody that's giving an eight or above, that is someone who's considered a promoter of the brand. And anybody who's, I think it's one to five, one to four, uh, is a detractor. The idea being that promoters are people that are out there talking about your brand, and then detractors are people who obviously are trashing your brand probably on social media, which not great. Um, usually, when you look at this metric, it's an idea of just to have a sense of, how is the consumer experience? And what was really interesting about uh, the vitamins and supplements category to me was you actually have a negative net promoter score for the category, for brands and retailers, which means that you have more detractors, more people who are naysayers of the brand or retail that they use, brand or retailer that they shop, than there are promoters. And so to kind of give you some context, that's, that puts vitamins and supplements lower than getting health insurance, notoriously bad experience, lower than getting cable installed, maybe even worse experience. Uh, and it's just way down there uh, in terms of consumer experiences. Uh, and so this is one where it's a bad experience because it's confusing. People don't know what to take and why. Uh, they don't know where is their science. They don't know where it's bullshit. And then two, there's a lack of trust because you've had bad actors out there uh, who are, you know, in the public for putting things in pills that are not on the, uh, you know, not actually on the label or you have people with, crazy marketing claims that can't be backed up. And then the third reason is that you have a lack of consumer feedback. So once someone starts taking something, they can't tell what happens. And so this winds up for most brands and retailers driving that negative net promoter score. And so that's the problem of putting it away on the shelf uh, and basically not, not thinking about it, not telling your friends, or if you tell your friends, you're maybe actually saying bad things about your experience. Uh, what we saw here was an opportunity, which is, you know, one of the, you know, I think there's always areas that JetBlue did this really well, which is take a stagnant category, make it delightful, and that will start driving word of mouth. So the first piece in terms of how do you drive word of mouth is you have to create a better experience, which is gross, brown bottles, uh, and just not at all delightful. This is looking at actually the net promoter score, which is the brands and retailers, as I mentioned, are negative uh, relative to, you know, you have on here, 
kind of the folks that we think about of like creating great experiences in the digitally native brand world, Warby Parker, Glossier. These are brands that drive word of mouth. So we thought, how do we combat the confusion? How do we build trust? And how do we close the feedback loop? Uh, for us, that's building something healthy and delightful and then use that to ideally grow fast. What that means is you come to our site, uh, our site at takecareof.com, we ask you, you take a quiz. And so we learn about your goals, diet, lifestyle, values, and your belief system. Uh, and then based on that, we'll give you a recommendation of what vitamins and supplements could be right for you. Transparency on the research, transparency on the ingredients, uh, ultimately looking to clear the confusion with personalization, uh, build trust with transparency, and also just having credible doctors involved. Uh, and then we ship you each month uh, a box of 30 little daily packets. They're personalized for you. They have your name on it. Uh, and they um, ultimately, that's your monthly kind of what's right for you, and it's all personalized for you. Um, what we did here was try to initially just make an experience that would be a better experience. And what we saw is like it's early days and we're not at Warby Parker levels, but our net promoter score is up in the 70s versus the category, which is down in the negatives. And I think this is because of that initial just focus on everything about the experience. How do we make it easier? How do we make it more convenient? Um, and how, you know, just how do we kind of be laser focused and maniacal about that customer experience? And I think this is the per first part when you're building a product is you have to have a product that's going to be net promoter score positive so that people talk about it and, and feel good about it. Uh, and then you just kind of, you have to constantly push yourself on this. For us, right now, sometimes we have ops shipping delays because we we have more demand and we're trying to manage that. And so we'll see a hit sometimes on net promoter score because of that. And so that makes us go back and focus and put more money behind that. Um, but then it's a little bit of a question of oftentimes if you're talking to investors, they maybe look at your net promoter score and they say, oh, great, this is going to go viral. You have a high net promoter score. Um, I think the reality is that net promoter score is just a survey of someone's intent on telling, you know, telling their friend. But the reality is, how do you actually bring up uh, your brand in the course of a conversation? So something like vitamins and supplements, even if it was a great experience, people still might not talk about it because it's not just actually doesn't wind up as part of your daily conversation that you're talking to your friends about. We wanted to think about how do we actually get ourselves in the conversation? How do we actually build word of mouth? And for this, I mentally kind of rewound to Bonobos where I was before. Um, you know, leading marketing there, I like to take credit for some of the growth, but I think the reality was so much of it was baked in with the initial product. Um, I first learned about Bonobos myself when I was at a friend's bachelor party. This guy was wearing these crazy striped pants called the Super Soakers. Uh, I don't think I'd ever ask a guy where he got his pants before. It's sometimes an odd question to ask another guy. But he got them at Bonobos, and the reason I ask is because they stood out. And I think if you look at early Bonobos products, uh, there was a lot of kind of flashy, colorful pants. Uh, the pocket liners were these kind of crazy-looking you know, floral patterns and a lot kind of happening. Um, and you, you had word of mouth, which is people would ask, you know, it would start a conversation. It was a product that starts a conversation. And then you also had pattern recognition, which is once somebody was actually wearing the pants, uh, if they saw someone else with that pocket liner, they would ask, hey, are those bonobos? And this was interesting to me because here's a product that is playing in the khaki pants space. And that is such a category that, like, you know, people don't ask about other men's khaki pants. And this was, took a product and actually created that, that conversation. And then when I sort of, you know, where this really kind of came together for me was reading Jonah Berger's book, Contagious, which I'll reference a couple times in here and would definitely be a strong recommendation to read. Uh, Jonah Berger basically looks at word of mouth and says, how does word of mouth spread? And one of the, one of the five areas he says is, is this idea of having something that's public. So he says, built to show, built to grow. The more public something is, the more people, more likely people will imitate it. Design products and initiatives that advertise themselves, e.g. red bottom shoes, and create some visible behavioral residue. So this is one that's kind of obvious in the fashion space. You have it with, you know, logos on branded shirts. You have it with bonobos. But how would we do this for vitamins and supplements? Again, this is a category that's usually tucked away in the shelf. It is a very private thing. It's not public. 
So we thought about the packaging here. We thought about how do we design something that's going to earn its way onto you know, the, the kitchen counter, that's going to earn its way onto someone's desk, uh, something that's going to actually put this product out there in the open. Uh, and so we spent a lot of time, we worked with you know, our in-house designers, we worked with an agency, thinking through what this box should look like. And for us, it wound up being, let's have you know, a mix of patterns. The patterns actually change each month in terms of what you receive. Have it be colorful, you know, looking at something like the Mass Brothers chocolate, which even if the chocolate maybe wound up not real, for those of you that know them, <laughs> the packaging's great. And I think the, the idea here was like, earn that, earn that spot on the kitchen counter. Um, because then you're out in the open and you're starting, to, you're starting to enter the conversation. And we see this nowadays in terms of people will tell us, oh, I saw it on my colleague's desk. And you know, that's where you're starting to enter there. Um, but then the next step for us was, okay, we've got kind of a permanent spot. This is the first part, which is like we made this piece public. It's, you know, it can be shareable. Some people are taking these. All the photos I have right now are specifically off of Instagram that real customers have posted about us. But how do we, you know, what else can we do? And so then it was thinking of some other campaigns. And Coke is obviously not a startup, um, but <laughs> maybe once was. But I love this idea that they had with the Share a Coke campaign, where it had people's name on it. Because it caused you, when you were looking to read them, to, share, to actually give them to a friend, to look for your name, it created something that was usually so mundane, which is purchasing soda, and actually thinking about the process, you know, thinking about it, giving it to a friend, like, it's crazy that Coca-Cola could get people to do social media, because it's just such a known brand. But I thought this was a great campaign by putting, putting names on there. Then the other piece that we thought a lot about was Snapple caps, which are sort of maybe a little bit cliche, but these are ones where, in the heyday, like, when people were you know, drinking Snapple, each time you'd read it and you'd, you know, whatever setting you were in, it'd be sort of this, uh, like, oh, you know, the I don't even know what this one is. This was the best Google image search that was the highest res photo. The bridge of eggs built in Lyme, Peru, Lima, Peru, was made of mortar that was mixed with egg whites. I actually don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what the bridge of eggs is. Does anybody know what the bridge of eggs is? I should. No. Okay. Anyway, but generally the thought process here is these cause people to start having conversations. Um, is it inserts you into the conversation in a way that um, gets people talking about you, even if it's a little bit tangential. And so this is another one of Jonah Berger's contagious pieces, which is this idea of stories. And here he says, information travels under what seems like idle chatter. Stories are vessels, so build a Trojan horse, create a narrative or story that people want to tell which carries your idea along for the ride. And so this is the idea of how do you create a story, how do you create a narrative, how do you spark your way, kind of like secretly shoehorn your way into the conversation. And for us, you can see we did a little bit of hijacking from the ideas that I just used. And these are actually, so we went through a lot of work. Like our, our biggest challenge as a company has been operationally actually fulfilling personalized daily packs because each pack has the person's name printed on it. It has a quote that we can actually customize to that person uh, and all the content on each day is different. Uh, <laughs> this is one where the, uh, initially there was an off the, there's an off the shelf um, machine. So if you know Pill Pack, who uh, seems to be doing all right these days, uh, sold to Amazon for a billion dollars, they have a machine that is off the shelf um, that basically you can, you, it can sort and you know, do the dispensing and all that, but there's limited ability to kind of customize what things look like. And for me, I wanted to build a consumer brand that was actually driving word of mouth, and so we bought separate packaging units, we created this whole line just to be able to do this, and it's a huge headache, but for me it's because we're able to then take this pack, this is the daily pack that people have and are carrying around, and we have the ability to enter into the story. So each of them has a quote, um, and over time, like I said, that can actually be personalized to the person based on the more and more we know about them. It has their name on it, and this is, if you look at um, Instagram, we've got about 80,000 uh, Instagram followers and, and rising, and the tagged photos are mostly people doing this. And it's because we really intentionally tried to say, like, 
every part of the packaging, how do we make sure that this is Instagrammable? What's the unboxing experience? What does the box itself look like? What does the pack look like? How do we get people to help us as marketers uh, grow the brand and also just make it fun and, and delightful? So then, you know, those are a couple of pieces. I'd also step back and say there's probably, there's I think five things on the Jonah, Jonah Burger piece, which is social currency. You can, you know, people will share what makes them feel good about themselves. Triggers, which is like how do you see things during the course of your day that trigger the brand. One of ours specifically actually, when I thought about the brand name, Care Of, uh, this wasn't the only reason, but a big bonus for me was that people are writing letters and writing C slash O. They're receiving letters that say C slash O. It's something that they're going to encounter in their daily lives. Uh, so building that into the brand. Then emotions, people share emotional stories. Practical value, people share if there's money that they're giving their friends or practical advice. And so uh, public. And then the last piece is stories. So basically, I'd encourage you to read those. We took about three of the six that Jonah Berger used, and we built those into our products. And so then you might think, okay, cool, products are going to go viral. That's all I need to do. You know, like, don't need paid marketing. And I think that's not necessarily true, you know, but what you want to do is have your paid marketing complement the word of mouth that you're building. So in our case, we thought about all the word of mouth we built into the product, and then let's give that to influencers you know, we'll pay some influencers, we'll give some products for free, but they're going to share the product the same way that consumers do. And this is, what we saw from this is that influencers share it, and then that basically shows consumers who are not influencers also how to share the product. And so it starts to be, oh, I saw care of's packs, you know, in my influencer feed, someone, here's what the shot looks like. And so it removes that, and then the customer receives it, they're like, I know what to do with this. Uh, so it's, it's training them in a way that's useful for us. Uh, then you also build it into referrals. So you know, build it into the referral program. That's word of mouth. And then build it into testimonials. Um, but generally, you know, for us, Facebook is, you know, for a lot of direct-to-consumer businesses, Facebook is like the majority of their spend. For us, it's 15%, and its influencers are much higher. Uh, and it's because it just it works for our product. And I think the idea is if you can build word of mouth into your product, it makes your job so much easier down the road. Uh, and what you need to do then is kind of tie your channel strategy to that product. So summary, build a, how do you get word of mouth and build it in, you know, into your marketing? Build a great product. It's got to start with an experience that's net promoter, positive, and very strong. Two, design a contagious experience. Be really thoughtful about this. And then three, build your paid strategy around that uh, contagious experience. Thank you all. Uh -huh.